If you've ever heard of the phrase ride like the wind and wondered what it meant, then this episode fits right into that thought. We'll be bringing you one of the most popular and enjoyable exercises around on two wheels. Also, in this episode, we'll be explaining some of the causes of anxiety and panic attacks and some alternative remedies as well. So join us on this episode of Busy Bodies as we pedal our way to fitness. Let's get started. Cycling. Cycling, bicycling, or biking are common names for this two-wheeled activity enjoyed by many people across the globe and commonly referred to as cyclists, bicyclists, or bikers respectively. Aside from fun and recreation, biking is also a professional sport and also serves as a mode of transportation as well. There are also other types of bicycles like unicycles, tricycles, quadricycles, and some similar human-powered vehicles, all utilizing a pedal-driven system for movement. History Bicycles have been around since the 19th century and are a familiar constant fixture in human life. As of today, approximately 1 billion bicycles have been sold and are ridden worldwide. In many countries, the bicycle is the principal mode of transportation. In 1817, a German named Baron Karl Vondre created a running machine which was called the Drazen or Velocipede. A simple machine by modern standards, the Velocipede simply consisted of two wagon wheels held together by a wooden plank and outfitted with a rudimentary steering device for the front wheel. The Velocipede was capable of occasional coasting with an increased range in speed. Because it allowed people to run along the ground as they sat atop the machine, it was christened as the running machine. Interestingly, the Velocipede was conceived in a time of a decent society, where anything to do with voluntary sweatiness and exertion was deemed ungentlemanly. Normally, anything to do with physical effort was allocated to the masses of unwashed and filthy manual laborers who could only get around by sole bodily movement. But the creation of the Velocipede seemed to have tapped into society's suppressed latent need for physical activity and exercise, becoming not only a precursor to the bicycle, but creating the fundamental concept that bicycle riding could be done for leisure, exercise, and sport. As the early 19th century moved into the middle 19th century, the years brought about many versions of the Velocipede. Unfortunately, public interest also waned over time because despite the numerous designs that were produced, none changed it into anything more than a diversion and fad. Enter the Michaud factory in Paris with their addition of pedals and lever arms to the front wheel. And as the desire to go faster produced larger wheels, so did the increase in instability. So even if the bicycles were becoming elegant and faster, concern was growing for the safety of the people who rode them. It was out of this issue that innovators started working towards a better and safer bicycle. In 1885, because of all the previous improvements and innovations made to the bicycle, another version called the Rover was born. The Rover now sported a chain and gear system, solving the issues that arose out of the previously large and stable front wheels. It would now allow the Rover, which had 30-inch wheels, to ride as fast as a normal bicycle with 50-inch wheels. Because of this basic adjustment, the new design kept the rider closer to the ground, keeping the bicycle stable and safer. And with this new and safer design in the 1890s came a riding boom of unprecedented proportions that eventually moved the riding pastime from fad to an essential part of the modern world. And at about the same time, bicycles coming out of factories started looking like the common bicycles of today. Chain driven with pneumatic tires fitted on equal size wheels and mounted on a distinct double diamond shaped frame, the modern bicycle finally came to be. As soon as the bicycle became popular, bicycle races inevitably followed. Finally, with promotional races regularly being held, in 1903, the first Tour de France was held. With an enormous and lengthy coverage of 1,500 miles, touring through France in six stages, 
the Tour de France cemented itself in bicycling culture as the premier prestigious event, and its popularity has only been growing ever since. With bicycle road racing already doing well, the velodrome subculture, meanwhile, kept growing with the setting of new records as well. Special speed races range from mere minutes to up to 24 hours. Six-day endurance races held at velodromes such as the Madison Square Garden in New York would have competitors racing non-stop for 18 hours a day. But because of complaints about the inhumane format, New York passed a law that reduced and set the limit to 12 hours. A new format then arose from this development, with riders riding in teams of two, taking turns with riding in the competition. At around the 1910s to 1920s, it eventually became the most popular sport in America, with track stars earning much more than baseball stars at the time. While most enthusiasts rode or competed on paved roads or flat surfaces, there was always a segment that would seek out and relish the off-road experience. A type of steeplechase on modified road bicycles. In the 1960s, a different trend in off-road biking began on the dirt roads of Marin County, California and throughout Colorado, making use of rough downhill terrain. And with the emerging trend, bicycle manufacturers began producing off-road bicycles and gear, solidifying the sport of mountain biking. Nowadays, you will also find so many kinds of bicycles in use. Simple cruisers to mountain bikes to road bikes made with the ultralight, high-tech material, the evolution of the bicycle is truly incredible. And this is made even more so with its huge following. From children to older adults, People from all walks of life have made biking a part of their life. Benefits of cycling Number 1. It is one of the easiest ways to exercise. Cycling doesn't require any high level of skill. Most of us know how to cycle, and once you have learned, you don't forget. You can also do this almost anywhere and any time, depending on your preference and needs. Number 2. Tones your muscles. Every single muscle in the body is involved when you are cycling. It improves general muscle function gradually with little risk of strain. Regular cycling strengthens leg muscles and is great for the mobility of hip and knee joints. After weeks of regular cycling, you will gradually begin to see improvement in the muscle tone of your legs, thighs, rear end, and hips. Number 3. Build Stamina People who bike usually enjoy the ride and don't notice the distances that they have already traveled. Number 4. Improves Cardiovascular Fitness Cycling makes the heart pound in a steady manner and helps improve cardiovascular strength. It also utilizes the largest muscle groups, raising heart rate in a steady manner. Number 5. Reduces stress As with any other physical activity, cycling can reduce stress as it serves as an outlet. It also keeps the blood flowing through your body. Biking outdoors is also a good way to be one with nature or to see the sights around the neighborhood. Boosts Energy A study published in the journal Psychotherapy and Psychosomatics found that bike riding improved energy levels by 20% and decreased fatigue by 65%. Why? Cycling triggers your brain to release the neurotransmitter dopamine, which is linked to energy. There's no need to ride hard to harness the perk. People in the study who pedaled at a low to moderate pace three times a week fought fatigue best. Number 7. Burns Calories a good statistical example would be a 135-pound woman pedaling to 12 to 14 miles an hour. Within these parameters, she would already have blasted 488 calories in 60 minutes. Basics. How to get started in cycling. So how does one get into cycling as a fitness program? The two most basic requirements, of course, is that you have a bike and that you know how to ride it. At its core, cycling today isn't much different from when you were a kid. There's still the excitement of feeling the wind against your skin. 
but as an adult, it is good to know that this activity can help you lose weight and build endurance. Number 1. Find your gear. Your bicycle should fit your body. The tilt of your seat, height of the handlebars, and how far forward you have to reach all figures in determining which bike is perfect for you. If your bike doesn't fit correctly, you're going to feel pain in your butt, back, and knees and might even lead to injury. You'll also want to spare inner tubes, a multi-tool, and a hand pump. A CO2 cartridge system works too. Store these gadgets in a saddlebag or tuck them in the pocket of a cycling jersey. Number 2. Find your getup. A helmet is a must. Cyclists are most vulnerable to accidents on the road. Wear something comfortable. Number 3. Find a route. Seek out long stretches of road, ideally ones with a relatively low volume of traffic. Your local bike shop or cycling coalition can make recommendations about where to find these roads. Number 4. Find your pace. On the bike, work on mastering the balance between gear and cadence, how fast you pedal. Find a pedal speed that's not so fast that you're bouncing in the saddle, but not so slow that you're grinding in it too hard on your gears. Finding the right pace gives a steady cardiovascular training without potential harm to your joints. Number five, find your workout structure. During your first few workouts, aim for an easy 30 to 45 minute ride. After your sessions, you may feel some soreness in your quads, glutes, and calves. Change your hand position frequently to ease the stress on your shoulders and neck. And be sure to ride with your shoulders relaxed and down, not hunched. Cycling's non-impact nature means you can ride as much as your schedule and fitness level allow. So commit to a minimum of two weekday rides of 30 to 45 minutes, plus a longer pedal on the weekends. You can safely add bursts of speed to your workout from the get-go. Try working in quick accelerations that last anywhere between 30 seconds to 5 minutes. These doses of speed add a powerful fitness boost and increase the number of calories you'll burn. Another way to build cardiovascular fitness is to climb hills on your bike. Conquering an incline also injects strength work into your aerobic ride. Work speed bursts and climbing sessions into your midweek rides, but don't worry about them on your longer weekend rides, when the goal is to increase the amount of time you spend in the saddle. While riding is pretty easy on the joints, smart training rules still apply. Be sure to balance hard workouts, cycling or otherwise, with easy days so your body can recover. Always consult your doctor before alternating your exercise regimen or starting a new one. It protects your ticker. Heart disease is the number one killer of women in this country, and two top risk factors are high blood pressure and high LDL cholesterol. In one study, researchers had 32 women ride at a moderate to high intensity three times a week for at least half an hour. After a year, they'd lowered their blood pressure and LDL, as well as significantly increase their aerobic fitness. Look for a road or path where you can ride for at least 30 minutes without stopping so you can keep a consistently high pace. Healthy eating. As much as eating a healthy lunch, it's important to actually take a break from the morning's activities to consolidate your thoughts, particularly if your work demands concentration. Taking a lunch break or even multiple short breaks throughout the day provides an opportunity for our brains to recuperate. Studies show that attention span is longer after a break. Taking a lunch break and nourishing the brain with food oxygen and water will lead to better work in the afternoon than continuously staring at your computer screen. If you habitually eat whilst you work, 
or at your desk, elevated stress levels lead to increased cortisol, which leaves fat accumulation in the body. There's also more chance of you overeating because the distractions from work cause you not to realize that you're full until you've eaten too much. As a tip, you may look forward to lunch as another activity and plan what you'd like to eat. It's important to pack a well-balanced meal to provide you energy for the rest of the day. Your nutrition, particularly your glucose intake, will decide your productivity for the rest of the day. By swapping some of the usual lunchtime suspects for colorful and healthy alternatives, you could significantly change the way you feel in the afternoon and critically, your energy levels for the rest of the day. Chicken fajitas. Ingredients. 1 third cup coarsely chopped fresh cilantro. 2 medium garlic cloves, finely chopped. 1 half teaspoon chili powder. 1 half teaspoon ground coriander. 1 half teaspoon ground cumin. Juice of 1 medium lime. 3 tablespoons olive or vegetable oil. 1 pound boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Kosher salt, freshly ground pepper. 1 medium bell pepper, any color, cored and sliced into half inch strips. 1 medium red onion halved and sliced into half-inch pieces. Eight six-inch tortillas, corn or flour. Place the cilantro, garlic, chili powder, coriander, cumin, lime juice, and two tablespoons of the oil in a shallow baking dish and whisk to combine. Add the chicken and turn to coat with the marinade. Set the chicken aside for at least 10 minutes or cover and refrigerate for up to 24 hours. Heat a grill pan to medium. Once hot, add the chicken pieces, season with salt and pepper, and cook undisturbed until well browned on the bottom, about 10 minutes. Flip and cook undisturbed until well browned on the bottom and cook through about 10 minutes more. Remove the chicken to a cutting board and let it rest while you prepare the remaining ingredients. Place the bell pepper and onion in a medium bowl. Drizzle with the remaining one tablespoon oil, season with salt and pepper, and toss to coat. Place the vegetables on the grill pan in a single layer. Cook, stirring occasionally, until tender and slightly charred about 10 minutes. Transfer the vegetables to a serving dish. Meanwhile, Warm the tortillas. Heat a medium cast iron or frying pan over high heat until hot, about three minutes. Place a tortilla in the dry pan and heat, flipping once until warmed on both sides. To serve, fill a warm tortilla with chicken and vegetables and top with guacamole, salsa, and sour cream. Have you ever felt so upset that you felt your heart skipping and experiencing a shortness of breath for no particular physical reason? Chances are you might be having a panic attack. Panic attacks are periods of intense fear or apprehension at a sudden onset accompanied by at least four or more bodily or cognitive symptoms like heart palpitations, dizziness, shortness of breath, or feelings of unreality all of which lasting for several minutes to several hours. Anxiety is an emotional state characterized by apprehension, uneasiness, panic, fear or terror, dread, uncertainty, or worry. Physical symptoms that often accompany the feelings of anxiety include jitters, insomnia, fear, sweating, shortness of breath, rapid heart rate, Feelings of anxiety can become a greater health concern when the symptoms become excessive and persistent indefinitely, cause emotional distress, or when the symptoms start to interfere with normal activities of daily living. The exact causes of anxiety and panic attacks in a given patient are usually unknown. Anxiety attacks can be triggered 
by intense stress or a traumatic event, such as a death, accident, or divorce, while others have no identifiable root causes. Physiologic and hereditary factors may also play a role in anxiety. Certain substances or drugs or withdrawal from such substances can trigger anxiety. The most common triggers include caffeine, over-the-counter decongestants, asthma drugs, and withdrawal from alcohol, tobacco, certain medications, and other addictive substances, including narcotics. Although there are prescribed drugs that target this problem, many believe that the best is to take the natural route towards relieving anxiety. Here are a few tips for managing and releasing the stress from panic attacks and anxiety. Natural medicine practitioners have used herbs that have calming effects and hold great promise in easing the symptoms of nervousness. Eliminating caffeine and alcohol, reducing your intake of sugar, refined carbohydrates, and foods with additives and chemicals may help lessen anxiety symptoms. Number three, calcium, magnesium, and vitamin B complex all contribute to the health and proper functioning of the nervous system. They also support the production of neurotransmitters, chemicals that help relay messages between nerve cells. Number four, exercising regularly and practice relaxation techniques such as meditation, yoga, tai chi, or progressive relaxation are all non-drug remedies that can help relieve anxiety disorders. Your routine should include cardiovascular exercise which burns lactic acid, produces mood-enhancing chemicals called endorphins, and causes the body to use oxygen more efficiently. Number five, controlled breathing techniques can help ease a panic attack. When an attack strikes, try this breathing exercise. Inhale slowly to a count of four. Wait four counts. Exhale slowly to a count of four. Wait another four counts. Then repeat the cycle until the attack passes. We hope that you picked up something new with this episode of Busy Bodies. With the history of bicycling and how the modern bicycle came to be, we saw how a simple invention born out of a man's inherent curiosity and drive evolved into something that would be a permanent fixture of life. From the simple running machine to the high-tech road bikes of today, bicycling progressed in a very impressive way. In fact, it still continues to change and improve to this day, and will probably keep on changing for as long as there is the spirit of freedom and adventure alive in the human race. So if you've started to consider taking up biking, remember to always eat healthy. Because you will need a greater deal of energy, you will also need to eat right and hydrate regularly. The right nutritional plan will also help reduce the risk of injury by keeping your body nutritionally sound. Exercise also plays a big factor in managing panic attacks and anxiety. We learned that breathing exercises and activities such as yoga, tai chi, and meditation promote a more natural way of facing and handling panic attacks and anxiety more. So as we wrap up another episode, join us for the next as we continue on the path to fitness and health. And remember, no matter how long or short the distance you go, no matter how hard or how light you pedal, any exercise is better than no exercise. See you at the next episode.